This week on the Push Wallows podcast, we've got an awesome guest and friend of the show, Holly Davidge. There's some weird stuff going on in her dream gym day, not gonna lie. Alright, three, two, one, a long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the Push Pull Legs podcast with myself, Damik. And me, Tom Hall, and we have one wonderful guest, Mr. Holly Davidge. What's going Hello. on? Hello. <laughs> Doing I'm well. First time. I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. you said Mr. Holly Davidge then. I'm just, I'll like, have to listen to that back. I think you mean Mrs. We'll Holly Davidge. Back. You can't we say, the thing is, you can say anything these days. It doesn't make a difference. Holly can just <laughs> identify as a male for today. It's fine. Uh, it's not a problem. Male, Whatever Holly. Like. How are you, Holly? What's going on? I am very good, thank you. I'm happy to be on after listening to the podcast for so long. One of the first ones I ever tuned into, which is years ago now, like four years ago. Amazing. I know. If anybody wants to know, they can listen back. Apparently, four years ago, Holly actually won Listener of the yes. Year, and she reminded us just now. So that's, <laughs> it that's came up on memories, her... and I was very <laughs> <laughs> on the TV straight away. Um, for anybody who doesn't know Holly, Holly, give us a little background of who you are, what you do in the fitness industry. Obviously, you don't have to do much because this isn't what the podcast's about, right? But we're, not, we're about, not about selling stuff. We're about having some fun. Okay, I'll give a brief overview anyway. So my <laughs> name is Holly, obviously. Um, I am an online coach. I am a head of exercise mechanics at the Physique Collective as well as um, a Physique Collective-related coach as well. I'm also a scientist, so I work full-time in clinical trials and I am a bikini competitor and I've been competing for nearly five years now. And I've just done my third season and I've gone into an off season now. So this year I'm focusing on just uh, building my business, building, uh, being part of the physique collective, doing seminars and just, yeah, make the most of not having to diet all year. <laughs> that must be the joy. That's the that's the real thing there. You said that was such joy. After all of that, that was the one thing that you smiled <laughs> as soon as you said it. So uh, yeah, well, I think a lot of people can relate to that, surely. Actually, I love my food and I do also have a food page, just to let you know. Um, but I love I find dieting so easy. Like I absolutely love it. I find it off season and like gaining weight very difficult and I don't enjoy it at all. But I find this prep like very, very easy. It's just obviously like the sacrifices you have to mm. um you have to have in terms of like socializing and eating out and stuff like that. But I thrive off dieting and being in a deficit and being lean. I just think it's a, my favorite thing. That's where I'd like sit happily when I finish competing as like somewhere towards the leaner end is that common for bodybuilders thriving off uh, being in a deficit for, for bikini girls i would say yeah because obviously yeah. we we don't have to get as you know, as muscular we don't have to develop our physique as much as like bigger um categories um so it's not as extreme it's more like of an attainable quote-unquote look so you don't have to get as shredded you don't have to get as bulky so i think it's quite a bit easier to sit on the, the leaner side um but yeah no I love it <laughs> Daniel when you were doing bikini compare did you sit on mm. the lean side as well never mate no <laughs> never enough, that's my problem yeah uh, yeah my, I think it was my hair that let me down when I was a bikini competitor to be fair um yeah you need to go through the hair flick that's when it. you do the transition I, I couldn't I couldn't do the hair that. flick that was my problem I couldn't I had the I had the I had the heel walking down to a T I was fine with that it was just the, it was just the hair flicks, but yeah. Okay. No, I like I think like I I think I sit near that end of the spectrum. Like uh, I think most people who find it hard to gain muscle will tell you they just don't eat enough, and anyone who finds it difficult to stay lean will tell you they just quite like eating. And like you say, you can still love your food, but not be someone that overeats all the time. I think there's a key difference there. Like you said, like I like my food, but I just don't need to eat shit loads of it. I just enjoy that one meal, and it's fine. <laughs> Well, Whereas a lot of people I know who are successful in bodybuilding, they just got massive and really big first in terms of muscle size. And then they just dieted down a couple of times and they go, oh, look, I look great. And it's like, for, for someone like me, it was always like, oh, for fuck's sake, like, <laughs> hardly enough to, to do it. Yeah, I think I think most of us make the mistake for our initial bulk of doing like a big, dirty bulk, thinking that it's all muscle. And then you realize that you are a five foot four female who weighs around 55 kilos and is never going to be uh, like made of pure dense muscle. Um, so I made that mistake the first time. Uh, but then after that, I've been a bit more conservative. Um, but yeah, as you said, like I absolutely love food. Like my family are in the food business. I grew up around all home cooked meals, talking about food 24 um, seven. But obviously when you're in the industry for so many years, you build up that knowledge and awareness so that you can make those informed choices all the time. 
um and that definitely helps to kind of keep you mm. in the shape you want to be while also enjoying things and not sacrificing things let's go into mm. that family or in the food business what did the family do is there something um, i can take advantage of here biscuits <laughs> chocolate yeah. well, uh, they originally opened up a Tex-Mex restaurant in Dublin, um, but then they mm. shut that and they opened up uh, a cafe that sold eight different types of soup every day. Um, and now they just do wholesale. So they provide soups, stews, pulled meats, like period, period chicken, all that kind of stuff to lots of different um, schools and cafes and restaurants and places all over Ireland. Um, which is I mean, it's really, really shit chat, but eight different types of soup. What what soups are they, uh, are they repping? I want, oh, I want to know what it says. Well, do you not do, know? Did you like, you weren't there? So long over ago. These My, they closed the cafe a long time. <laughs> it was like, say they would do like a Thai red curry soup or like a shepherd's pie soup or like a Mexican style soup. So they'd make like stews and casseroles into soups. So they're more like party meals and not just like blended shepherd's like tomato pie herb. soup. That is niche, yeah, isn't it? Very, that is very, very, good. very niche. That. Very good. I'd recommend I mean, I would go. Like, I'd go to most restaurants, but I would go to that. Bring yeah, to they are. They are like meals in a bowl, so that's why they. they that is that well. is soup. Well, I would say that is meal in a bowl. <laughs> 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 but yeah, shepherd's pie soup. I'm down with that. Would you blend it? What the? I'm, no, I'm trying to work out them. in my head. Well, I'm assuming it's not got mash in it, has it? It's probably got like chopped up potatoes with the yeah, veg and the mince potato, and the yeah. sort of yeah. thicker gravy. Not, like, not like actual mashed potatoes. I was thinking it's got like a top <laughs> layer of mash and like a bit of cheese on top. Yeah. Like, how's that work? <laughs> <laughs> How am I drinking this? I don't really understand yeah. it. So that's cool. I don't know any soup restaurants. Uh, uh, did you, Daniel, I've just got to say this. Um, did you see the sandwich I ate yesterday in Madrid? Oh, my I story. did not, Tom. I'm sorry. Your stories bore me to death, mate. I didn't know <laughs> I've muted them. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't doesn't come into my. What the hell? I just consider you abuse. Oh, it was ridiculous. It was like this big. That's big sandwich. Yeah. It was big sandwich. It it, Tom, it's, it's it's an audio podcast, mate. You doing that? Um, it was go, on, go on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. I did this. It was, it was this bigger big. than my head. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah. Joe will click that up. It's fine. Um, and it was just pure. It was just cheese and ham, basically, and bacon, basically, all. Yeah. Grilled. As, grilled. as you can tell, realize. Tom Tom likes to sit on the leaner side as well, just naturally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cheese and bacon and ham. Cheese and ham brick. Easy, well, yeah. we worked out when whenever I visit Dan in Dubai, I actually after the last time I actually said, I think I'm pretty sure on this. I eat by myself more than him, Laura and Isabel put together. Really? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think that's about right. So that's one Just, thing as well. I, the other thing as well, before like we were talking before we start hit record, Holly, the other thing about living here is you just don't move because yeah. everything is in because it's because it's so warm. I, that's the other thing for me is I feel like so it's related somehow, but I I feel like I regulate my hunger quite well. I'm someone who, based on activity levels, I just know my body just regulates. I just don't eat anywhere near as much. So when I was a PT in London, I used to be able to eat a bit more, but I just don't change my weight. And like over here, you just don't do it. And Tom came over and he was like, are we going to eat or what? And I'm like, what did, we've just eaten four hours ago. And he's like, I'm still hungry. What are you on about? Like, give me some food, like all the time. He'd be like, what are we eating? What are we doing? And we'd be there going, yeah. oh, I'm pretty full now. I've had this little bit of food. <laughs> and yeah, Tom was just Tom must have gained about four kilos being here for a week, I swear. I do the same, like I have to eat my six meals a day. And if I don't eat them, I'm like, oh my god, eat. I'm gonna starve, starve to death. <laughs> I mean, I'm not yeah, I don't have them written out, but yeah. Six meals, I reckon that's about right. What's um, a meal? I need to always look forward to something soon that's coming so I can get through the day. Yeah, that is definitely bikini girl mentality. Yeah. Is, but, um, <laughs> right. So based on these questions, Tommy, we may need to add another one now. Based on what Holly just said, we need to decide whether she's training in her off season or a dieting phase because that could come into it. Whether she enjoys one or the other, you know, you know, yeah. the dream, the dream gym day. I think it's dream, I think that's the dream gym day. day. That's that's the, I feel like she's got to be in. Uh, it was f- like three, four years ago, dirty bulk season. She was yeah. saying, "This is yeah. what's going to happen." Okay. So, uh, protein shake or protein bar, Holly? So definitely protein bar because I have a rule where I don't drink my calories because I just don't. And the only exception is when it's alcohol. But other than that, I will not drink my calories. So it always is that's a, a bar. That's a good exception. Um, <laughs> protein bar. What? What are we talking? You, you must so, have dabbled for the, the seasons you've been in. I've dabbled quite a bit. Um, 
so obviously I am partial to a grenade bar, especially like a salted caramel one. But because I'm Irish, I have to show my loyalty to Fulfill because they are an Irish brand. And I actually do think that their salted caramel bar is better than the grenade one. And they've also just brought out a dark salted caramel Fulfill bar, which is very nice. And I do recommend it. Is Fulfill mm-hmm. the one that's in Boots? They're in WH mm-hmm. Smith. I think they're in Boots as well, but they sell them. In w. The- w. Smith. Nobody Why? goes in WH Smith unless they're in the airport. Nobody knows that. Or the, that's, that's or the, the only thing. I live on the train. <laughs> <laughs> And the airport. Um, I th- yeah, they I are think they're the ones. But they're rock solid, aren't they? They are hard bars. No, yeah. they're, no they're, I think I think they've come on a long way. I think they're they're, yeah. they're definitely more like grenade bars than you probably think. Yeah, they have newer the newer uh, recipe ones and the newer flavors are quite nice. Um, but yeah, tried the green one. That's the sort of dark salted sort of caramel one. It's very nice. Um, but I've tr- I've tried many different. I was trying to think of what other ones I've tried. Did you go through the phase of like the protein pantry, like? I feel like you're no, that I kind of listen person. to you review all of them, but I never tried them myself. Oh, wow. <laughs> we obviously weren't. We obviously weren't good enough at reviewing them. Clearly, um, I yeah. I used to like. We used to love the protein pick and mix. You go and get some random ones. We had yeah. some, some really random ones on there. Um, what were those ones that were like wafer Tom? They were quite. Like they weren't the, high enough in protein. The, but... the optimum nutrition ones you can get that are like crispy and they have like marshmallow ones they're quite nice as well i can get them mm. that's what we found it was like the multi textures were always yeah. the the winners if it was just kind of rock solid or kind of a bit too soft or you know like the, the quest style i never was into oh. them they're not nice there's somebody i was still talking to somebody the other day and they were like quest is still like up there I was like, what no planet like 10 years I ago. Remember, I remember, yeah. I remember when I think it must have been my first ever shoot. I mean, this is a long fucking time ago. And I had hair at that. Um, I remember having a box of the Quest chocolate chip cookie dough ones. And they were like, when I was dying for food, they were like, oh my God, these are incredible. And then to this day, still have nightmares about like the fact they were bricks with like two chocolate chips in. And that was about oh, it. Not- um, <laughs> just not good at all. And how much it came on in such a short space of time, the technology to make them better. Um, yeah, was, uh, like, yeah. sometimes like even if if i'm looking like oh well i have a chocolate bar or a protein bar sometimes i'll go for the protein bar just because i like the flavor better so it's mad how fast it's come on because they used to be known as like you know they're a little bit healthier but they taste a bit like you know chalky um but many of them don't taste like that anymore i actually had this reminder in my head last night that i looked up do you remember like i don't know how many years it was ago like 10 years ago the flex bowl phenomenon on instagram mm-hmm. I was looking them up on the Google uh, images. I was like, I cannot believe people would starve themselves all day and then binge on like a massive flex bowl, take a photo of it and put it on Instagram. And people are like ogling, like, oh my God, there's so much shit in that bowl. And it was like, everyone was boasting about it. I just thought, I think that's madness thinking about it now. Yeah, I never got on that hype. I used to see it and think, oh, I'm just not really on it. it I'd never be able to save that many calories for the evening. I wouldn't have the control. I used to, so the thing about that I used to never understand was like Mike used to do this a lot. Right, he used to have like a big bowl of like yogurt, Greek yogurt, and he put loads of raspberries with it. And then he'd sprinkle on like 10 grams worth of like Rice Krispies for a bit of crunch yeah. or something or some cinnamon, cinnamon, uh, curiosity cinnamon or whatever. And I was like, what's the fucking point? You can't yeah. taste any of it. Like if you want a bowl of cereal, I have a bowl of cereal. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it's just the, te- the texture of it. And like, it was one of those things. Again, it was like just to, you wanted the protein and all the fiber, but then you just thought, I'll oh, put a sprinkle of that. I was like, I could never get into it. I was like, you, there's no point. Like you're just wasting it. This is absolutely zero point. And that's what the flex balls were. It was just like 10 grams of a bit of cereal, 10 grams of chocolate chips, 10 grams of like a bit of fruit, and then like some sugar-free syrup on it. I'm like, oh, I just like, no, it just all looks yeah. like, nah. Don't think it would it would work at all. I never went for them at all. Don't a know. little bit disordered as well. <laughs> slightly. Slightly, <laughs> slightly, yeah. Let's not talk about that though. That's just, uh, yeah, let's, let's just skip past that bit. But, yeah. Right. AM or PM workout, Holly, where are we going? Mm, it depends. I think during the week, I like PM, but I will do AM if I need to. But I find I have to get up super early for that. And it, it's, you're just wrecked by the time you start work. Um, so I usually train around half five six um but at the weekends i do like a nice like 11 a.m session and you know you take your time it's, a, it's you your dream day it's your dream day dream, you dream day yeah well, okay, okay. It's it's dream, day. dream day okay then i'd say 11 a.m because that means i can also use like a caffeine pre-workout because i wouldn't let myself in the evening um so i can go wild with that um and then you still have time to have like a nice brunch afterwards or you know get a nice like 
good meal in, go out to eat somewhere nice. Um, yeah, so I'd say like 11 a.m. So there, there must be something coming pre, pre, there must be a meal pre, right? Before the workout. Yeah, I, I, have, I had, yeah, I usually and like, how many, how many of the six are you fitting in before? <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, um, I'd probably only get one in by that stage, to be honest, <laughs> straight away when I get up. Uh, so I get one decent meal in, probably the weekend I would have a savoury meal one, like an eggs and English muffin or a bagel or something like that. Um, and then train and then have a nice meal somewhere. That'd be nice. What What's going to be the perfect like pre then? Is it just going to be eggs? Eggs, bagel? Oh, but it, yeah, but it changes then. Because say I want to go out to brunch afterwards, I'd probably get eggs then. So I probably wouldn't have eggs before that. So then I'd probably just have cream of rice or something. Keep it simple. Interesting. Cream of rice on dream gym day. Cream <laughs> I, I love, bikini. I love Absolute cream bikini rice. girl. Absolute <laughs> bikini girl. I have it. What flavor? So flavor. Every flavor. I have currently. I have salted caramel, maple syrup, chocolate fudge, chocolate peanut butter. Uh, I had banoffee before. That was very nice. Uh, I have. Oh, I have cherry bakewell. But, but anyone not familiar with cream of rice? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm that more is familiar. Me. That's I'm, why I'm, I'm not in I'm this I'm more. World, I'm so more familiar I'm with like... cream of rice because it's a it's a food you give to a child who <laughs> is weaning <laughs> food. Um, but bodybuilders have cream of rice, which is basically it is exactly as it sounds. It is basically crushed rice flour yeah. uh, with some sweetness added to it that they add water to. I'm assuming not milk, water to. Um, and it kind of, yeah, it kind of goes like a little paste, like a little funky paste that doesn't really taste much. Uh, and it was, yeah, originally given to, to babies because um, it's easy to digest <laughs> um, and tasteless. So there you go. And then there bodybuilders decided to go on it on, on that hype. Like, so, uh, yeah. Mike always jokes about the fact that bodybuilders are such babies because none of them can digest oats properly, doesn't he? Yeah, because that's the, that's the thing. I think a few people started moving away from oats because they were like, oh, this is higher in fiber and you can't digest it. So a few of them jumped on cream of rice and then every single person jumped on it. And then obviously some of the bigger names have then made their own versions and added sweeteners and all this sort of stuff to it. But uh, yeah, I mean, for, for, I get it. I get the the, the point of, of it. And also I imagine the flavorless one probably mixes well with whey protein powders. Like, you know, that because again, a lot of protein powders now, the taste have come on quite a lot. I know the form, is it called perform? They're like, everyone yeah. raves about oh, them at the moment. The form. Yeah, yeah, so basically with, with the oats, obviously the oats are plain. So you have to mix the whey in to give it any flavor. But what I do is I have a flavored cream rice, but I use the whey as a sludge and I make a sludge with the whey and then I pour it on top. So you get two different flavors that you can combine together. That's my rationale. I do like right. it. So Tom, just to let you know, mate, protein sludge. So I have to, I have to do this because most of the audience like Tom, right? So protein sludge, Tom, is where you put like basically the protein powder in a bowl. You add a tiny bit of water and you mix it until it forms like almost, imagine like a, a um, yeah, imagine like a, a thick chocolate sauce on ice cream. Bodybuilders think that doing that with whey protein is the same thing, even though it's not. They think it's the same. So they have, so you imagine like Holly's basically having salted caramel paste, like rice, <laughs> rice paste, effectively, salted caramel yeah. flavor with carrot cake paste on top yeah. is effectively oh, her, dream, dream, your her dream, dream yeah, yeah, her dream. Yeah, her dream. You get what's happening here, right? <laughs> That's what? great to me. Eggs twice. <laughs> Fuck it. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, there you okay, go. cool. Well, I feel like you're gonna have to send me a picture so I can replicate this to even fucking try it. I don't even I don't live in this world. Like I deal cool. with like athlete based people and yeah, you like, see when you're a bikini athlete and you have to get to a certain level of leanness to compete, your calories get so low that you think of any little thing to make something exciting for yourself and you convince yourself that this is the most delicious dessert you've ever had when really it's just mm. rice flour and whey powder in artificial flavors i ate a whole bag of mini eggs yesterday just because yeah that's <laughs> fine <laughs> so i've seen I've, I've seen people tom make like basically like protein pancakes and then they put the the, the paste over it as if it's some sort of like decadent what? Yeah. No. yeah yeah the protein's it, tom, in the fucking pancake you no, live in a different world mate i will tell you the weirdest thing i ate this prep and you're gonna kill me so basically you take your egg whites yeah you put some baking powder in it and some toffee flavor drops or whatever flavor drops you want and some spinach. You blend that up into a green kind of consistency of liquid. Then you pour that into the pan. You make a green pancake with it. Then you flip it. You add some dark chocolate, spread it around the green pancake, put it on the plate, and then you top it with sugar-free syrup. 
and then I eat it. Do you? Do you eat it? I actually do. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. There you go. Wow. Mental. This is a different world. Isn't it funny how there is different worlds out there? You know, people talk about parallel universes. The bodybuilding scene is a parallel universe. It is, isn't it? It's just, like, yeah. It's, just, it's, yeah. it's a bit yeah. mad. Yeah, we it's are crazy. So you can see why going. now, Tom. You can see now why the the cream of rice with paste on is the dream. It's a yeah. dream. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I get it. I get it now. Yeah, it's a dream <laughs> it is. Day. Some days I didn't even have any carbs, so I was even able to have cream of rice. That was a very good day because I meant I had oh, carbs. <laughs> dear, what is going on? All right. Um. So you 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 mentioned your pre workout. You said you could have a caffeine. Are you gonna have that, or are you gonna drift towards coffee? Do you drink coffee? I am. Yeah. For see. Uh, I have this hypothesis, which some people think that I'm just making up, that I don't think I am, I think I'm a hypo metabolizer of caffeine. I don't think I metabolize it as fast as other people. So I would need to have like a good dose of caffeine in like pre-workout wise, whereas coffee doesn't really have enough to give me that boost. So I would say I'd go for more of a pre-workout with a better dosage of caffeine. Okay. Interesting. Of my <laughs> no, you're speaking. I've literally <laughs> got a bag of coffee on my desk think, right now. I, th I think with that, like, I think with that, you only you know, like, again, people yeah. can I people agree. can't really tell you, right? Whether you whether you not know, whether you do or you don't. I know people that that have varying levels of of caffeine dependency. Obviously, like, I've really drastically reduced my caffeine now. And if I have two, if I have two coffees without much food, I start to feel a bit like, oh, fucking hell. Whereas I used to be able to have four in a day, no problem. Yeah. Like, get through the day, absolutely no no problem at all. And so it's funny how you can you can move it around. And like I said, you'll know based on on that. I I don't know if I get yeah. like genetically tested and see if I have like a certain allele that means I don't metabolize caffeine as well yeah. as others because. I don't get withdrawals if I don't have it either. So I feel just the same. Mm. I just speculate. It's fine. It's good, it's <laughs> I just make up all these things about myself. <laughs> You're a scientist, Holly. You can you can do what you want. Exactly. You can exactly. make any sort of analysis. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Confirmation bias. <laughs> yeah. Correct. All right. Um, let's move on to more gym-based stuff. So obviously Dan has been wondering. So your 11 a.m. workout, um, yeah. what outfit? attire shoes what are we going with are there any accessories that you're taking to your session Try i'm assuming so because just yeah they look like how many like have we got pod. fyi yeah. i know that holly is a big person for like integra and rts so i'm assuming there's seven to eight different types of cuffs that she has to take for various different appendages and attachments just to I find think... some sort of uh, cable machine that that is has the ability to do something to her. That's, that's bang. I think people get a little bit nervous when I open up my gym bag and they're wondering <laughs> what the hell that stuff is. Um, so yeah, my gym bag is quite vast and diverse in terms of equipment. So I I do have two different sizes of cuffs. Usually I have it. um knew it normal size yeah. pair and I have a small <laughs> size. Um, I usually have nylon climbing slings, which are not just for climbing. Uh, I have daisy chains, carabiners, obviously. Um, a number of obviously. different <laughs> a number of different resistance bands. Obviously, you have like your wrist straps and your lifting straps and all that stuff. Um, what else do I have? I have a tripod because I like to film my lifts. Um, obviously, what is my a climbing equipment. sling when it's at home. How? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you use that for? <laughs> Mate, you've not been to an Integra education session or just watch all this stuff. That just looks like a daisy chain, no? Is it not just like a daisy chain? No, because the daisy chain has like loops like like a daisy chain. So you can attach to different points of the chain. Whereas the nylon climbing thing is just one single loop. Of course. How silly of me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Surely you just need the daisy chain though, because you just pick the longest points at which the two loops are. You can use the daisy chain, but it can just be a bit awkward because it's quite fat. It can be awkward, can it? All, yeah, all the other stuff's not awkward, but no, it's <laughs> yeah. fine. Okay, yeah, cool. yeah, basically the nylon climbing sling acts like an extension of the cable. So you can set yourself, say you're doing like a fly or something. Instead of like starting back here, you can come a bit more forward and the cable's not pulling you back. So it's just more for like mm -hmm. joint integrity and health preservation. Um, mm. The daisy chain can be to adjust like if you're reverse banding something or banding something, um, you can change at which the band kicks in. Like yeah. if you're reverse banding a hack or something like that. I love that from week to week, we've gone from us chatting to Amelia, who where we were like three times a week, full body, crack on, do what we like. <laughs> Same three exercises every session, pretty much, yeah. 
don't really care what I'm doing. Holly's like, yeah, this I'm is exactly how it's happening. I need strategize um, with my program. <laughs> this is good. Um, amazing. So before you're walking in, obviously, you're probably then, I'm assuming your headphones in. Are your headphones on? Are your headphones yeah. in? What music are we listening to to get you hyped and throughout the session? Ooh, I listen to a bit of a mix at the moment. I've been kind of listening to like rave style music because it's getting me like in the zone. I really like it. Um, my coach actually introduced me to rave music. So thanks to him, I have a playlist now that I play. Um, but I am quite into, I like r and I like pop. I like dance music. I'm a bit of a mix. I'm not into like heavy metal or rock at all. So if that comes on, I wouldn't. I will not be listening to it. I'll be changing it. Um, you couldn't go to the gym with Tom then. Okay. Yeah, not uh, to yeah. I listen to some people and like they when they have a top set and they have someone like screaming in their ears and I can't tolerate that. It's just too too much stimulus for me. I need something. Chill out. Let's chill out music. It's fine. That's okay. That's... I can do chill out music better because you know when people have to like hype themselves up so much for a set, they're like literally about to go insane. They're so like in sympathetic drives that they're going to go crazy. I I don't see the benefit in that. I think that's just counterproductive because you're wasting so much energy on just being that hyped in the first place. Um. I like to take a more chilled approach. So if you had one one artist, one album, what are you going to listen to? Oh, God. Oh, That's my too much so silly. <laughs> um, I quite like Cream with a K. They're quite good, like dancing music. Uh, Fred again, obviously. If I'm going like just music I love to hear, I'm obsessed with years why, and years. Why are we getting, we're, right, we're picking like people who understand rock music because that's that's twice you're on that side of the screen for me that people have gone Fred again and Dan went Fred, Fred again, again last week. So good. I listened well, so, to that. Yesterday, we're talking last. We're talking last was it last session? Last time with with Amelia, we were talking about it, and she was like, "Oh, I like listening to these sorts of things." Yeah. yeah. And she was like, "Oh," and and she said, "Oh, who would you recommend?" And I said, "Said if you like a bit of house music, I said put Freddie Gunn on." And she was like, "I've never heard of him." I was like, "You've never heard of Freddie Gunn? Like, where's that in this world?" And Tom's like, "Who's that?" Oh, I was like, "Oh my god, get me some real guests <laughs> on." And then here you are saying Freddie Gunn straight away with no with no prompting, just straight away said it. There you go. Hey, you've been messing with me. That's what you need. Oh, that's what you need. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the music that doesn't go anywhere? Yeah. Like that you put on a car, Dan, and I'm like, what is this? It's kind of like chilled, relaxed. Like some of it can get you up, but some of it, it's like it doesn't. It just never like, gets that crescendo yeah. that makes you feel like, oh my god, like like Holly just said, that gets you so hyped up. But it's enough to make you feel quite calm and relaxed, but also not so much so that you just want to go to sleep. Do you know? It's hard to it's describe. Feel me. good. Feel good music. Just feels I think good, yeah. like I think I I don't know. Maybe I listen to like I'm. I would say I'm a quite a calm individual naturally in all my other parts of my life so maybe i need like some heavy music to get me going why maybe. for now but i think as well with his stuff like a lot of it has a story behind it like if you watch his like youtube channel he's, he posts the videos and the, the of what he was thinking when he created the music and all this sort of stuff and some of the videos he uses yeah it's, it's, it's a bit more to it than that tom it's a bit deep you know you you just need someone shouting at you because you're not really you're not you're not too intelligent you know if you're, if you're yeah, intelligent you're you connect the story intellectual and... to understand fred again sorry, sorry. <laughs> so don't worry about it tom it's fine mate. you won't be at that level it's not a problem <laughs> don't worry. well i'll be leaving this you, you two can crack on you can keep listening to fred again uh, <laughs> Right. Um, so apart from Dan, apparently being your workout partner, are you training with anybody else? No, I don't no. try to people. No, no. Like, <laughs> on, on the odd time I will. But if we're talking about my perfect gym day, then absolutely not. They only hold me back. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I've trained with Dan. That definitely happens. So that's, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Uh, that's it. <laughs> it's weird how like that evolves, isn't it? Like I feel like because obviously we used to train together a lot, Dan. And then mm. like I think now we probably prefer to. It's a little bit of alone time, I guess, because we're all coaches as well. And like, we have to talk to people for a living. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm well, I'm not, I'm, I don't talk to a lot of people during the day. So I do go to the gym and I do like try and chat to people because that is the time where I meet people day to day. Um, but obviously when you are bodybuilding, your training plan is so specialized to you that why would you hire a coach and invest money in them and then go off and do someone else's program or why would they do yours? Like, I just yeah. wanted to do my own thing and know that I'm doing what I need to do to progress. Um, because I like the detail and the nitty gritty of stuff. I don't like just kind of faffing around and going with the flow. I get you, hundred percent. Yeah, mm. but I don't know whether I'd have a workout partner. No idea. All right, this is going to be interesting. Then I feel like actually getting into the nitty gritty because it's going to be very different, guest by guest. Because perfect warm up, Holly, to bodybuilders warm up. This is going to be controversial. That one. <laughs> 
like so yeah, that's flailing arms, no, right? No stretching where I come from, no dynamic or static or any sort of stretching. Uh, we do things called feeder sets, which is a fancy way of saying warm up sets. But essentially, it's using the same exercise but at lighter loads until you get to your working set weight. Um, but you start off at a certain amount of reps. And as you get closer to the working set, you'll just use less and less reps just to like prime your nervous system for the movement that you're about to go through um, and get yourself mm. used to that movement and adapted to that movement pattern. So your joints are well mobilized for it. Um, but that would be the only warm up I would do. I wouldn't walk on the treadmill or do any stretching or anything like that. Um, that's the one, it's, yeah. it's pretty much the, the same kind of shit that we do we just probably pick a less biomechanically advanced exercise that's about it so a little bit less yeah i think Stop i think with that as well with, with bodybuilding stuff because you're almost so almost you're almost trying to create the most stable environment yeah yeah it matters less i think whereas if you're doing more you know like loads of walking lunges and jumps and, and you know things like that it's probably beneficial to do something a little bit more well-rounded and dynamic but like yeah. you said there, if you're literally strapping yourself in with a daisy chain to certain things and like, hey, you can't, move, can't like, get out oh, of her. You know? Like, yeah, she's just kind of like pinned <laughs> to the cable, <laughs> and, you know, like straight away. You have to do eight sets. You have to stay there for eight sets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The machine. I've spent all um, this time strapping myself into it. Yeah. So I have to stay here for that long. Yeah, um, no, it makes it makes sense. I think like as we've got, I suppose as we, we developed and got probably got more experience. I think we probably put less, less. Um, I suppose. Yeah, just. What's the word I'm looking for, Tom? Um, Thought, care, I don't know. Care, I suppose care is a word, but yeah, just, <laughs> just, just less pressure on the warm up. I think some people see it as like this thing that has to be done really, you know, properly. And like, if they don't warm up properly, they can't train. It's like, eh, yeah, probably gonna I be mean, okay. like, I, I've been called like a warm up junkie a hell of a lot. And, but I would say I've probably in the last like nine months, my warm ups have gotten even more minimal, I think, now. But I also don't categorize all the kind of jumps and shit that I do as a warm up. Uh, that's a completely different section to what i do all that kind of stuff so yeah i literally do like two things i think i would classify as warm-up now and i think it's all right so i'd rather just I, it's also a case of i'd rather be in and out in about 45 minutes i'm just like all right yeah. let's, let's just crack on and like i know i'm not going to injure myself by doing these six exercises most likely I've got mm. enough reps in the tank but yeah that's interesting best exercise holly i feel like this is going to be really interesting that's for me. gonna be so hard you're only allowed one by the way you're only allowed what? one we're not gonna be like you know, i feel like we're gonna be here all day, you know, Sorry, this day. <laughs> no also we need to decide are you because obviously with you there would be a what day you're doing are you doing push day, yeah, pull day leg day how how is it split up? how is your yeah. how is your perfect split orientated like yeah the moment i do an upper lower split and i train lower three times a week because it's that's kind of more important for bikini but i do delts every day like on all upper and all lower days because they're all very important um, I love training delts, so I'd probably pick a delt exercise to be fair. Some sort of cuffed cable, either seated or standing or lying, depends. Um, there's so many varieties. Um, depends how lazy you're feeling that day, right? If you're seated, yeah, whether I can be honest to down. pull the bench across, <laughs> that is true, or whether it's even available. That's the thing. In my gym, it can get so busy at rush hour that you're like, I'll just make do with what I have. Um, but ultimately, I would have like a Cybex Bravo because that's my favorite cable machine. Um, and I would use that to set up. Um, but I do like a good machine lat raise as well, depending on the machine. Yeah. So, so some is it sort of body day or is it lower body day? I don't, I don't like training legs. <laughs> I'm a terrible bikini girl. I love I love upper body. I love chest, even though there is no reason for me to train chest. Um, I love training delts. Um, and I like back. So yeah, I'm an upper body. Upper day. That's my favorite. Yeah. Upper day. There you go. I meant to train Amazing. up for today actually, but we ha I do I have this new kind of method of progression where we add sets every week. So this week is my week four of my mesocycle, and I'm doing like five sets of hack squats and five sets of rows, and it, it's quite long and laborious. So uh, I have to really get myself in the mindset to go and do it. Yeah, yeah fuck me, that wouldn't be fun. No, it, no. it can't. Be rough. <laughs> I really now like with my training, I just can't do high reps anymore. I just anything above eight for me, I'm just like, oh fuck off. Like not boring, doing it. isn't it? You're like, I'm done yeah. now. <laughs> Between four and eight, I'm just like four and eight, I'm happy with. Any less than four, I guess it's too hard. Um so <laughs> like I've moved my range. I'm just like, I just can't be asked to count that high to stand there that long. It just it just bores me. I think the, the feeling and the pain 
again above like eight i just can't do it anymore i just can't be bothered um it's just funny have- how as you get older you just you, you your progressions change you like because now i'm just like okay i'm gonna take this weight and do it for four reps and i'll keep using the weight until i can do eight with it and then i'll go to a heavy weight <laughs> and that's literally all i do just like, can't I, mean, you just, I think what i realize is kind of the opposite what you think like the more you learn and the more you develop your knowledge the more you realize most things don't actually matter like you don't have to do a certain rep range for a certain thing. As long as you're training in a certain proximity to failure, it doesn't matter whether you do six reps or 20 reps. There's no like hypertrophy, strength, endurance, rep range. That's not a real thing. Um, Just train as close mm-hmm. to failure as you can and then just crack on with it. That's what I find is kind of the more you learn, the less anything matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah funny, pretty much. It's funny. It's just that, yeah. more we, the... we have probably like 12 exercises we rotate through and that's, that's it. That's yeah. Like, uh, that's literally it. I was just like, these. Yeah. everybody does these most of the time within a three-month cycle. And yeah, guess what? They'll come back around again. Uh, just yeah. a slightly different rep range, a slightly different, like, yeah, tempo. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're going to do them power-based orientation, all that kind of stuff. And it's just like, yeah, that's about it. So it just makes it more exciting. Not really. It might be for novelty, I- isn't it? Like, obviously, like, for if you give a client a program, you want to make sure that they're enjoying it and they're not getting, like, really bored by doing the same thing all the yeah. time. So it is nice to put in, you know, giant sets and supersets and stuff like that to keep them interested but really like a lot of it is is mainly for novelty and obviously the more you in, you enjoy it the more you're going to stick to it and the better the outcome is going to be so that's kind of the the principle underlying it I suppose. such an interesting thing because i i do not i do not not i always will <laughs> uh program with supersets I, yeah. I never do single sets for anybody at really? all really interesting yeah. never um yeah it's just, just i don't know whether that's just coached in through athletic based training more than anything else and every like most of the philosophies Dan, you must be similar to that surely now yeah a lot of my a lot of my a1 movements i might not do as a superset um if 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 i want to make sure people if i want them to ensure that they check their form and do things right there and i want to see them progress just because yeah. i find a lot of people don't have the capacity um to focus well enough because um, it's always a case I'd always mm-hmm. add in stuff like uh, like either capacity exercise or an integrity exercise, stuff like that. So it's like yeah. work. I think I think with you, you work with stuff. more you work with more PTs or you work with people in person. Yeah. So it's easier for you to gauge that I wouldn't trust someone going from a three rep trap bar deadlift into an exercise where it might require them to have some coordination. I wouldn't I wouldn't trust them to be able to to do that. If it was like, you know, 12 rep goblet squat yeah throw in something with it that's not a problem like because they'll they'll be fine they're just gonna be a bit gassed at the end of it um so a lot of the a1 stuff I'm, i may i may not because i want them to focus purely on that but the majority of it is yeah like if you're doing arms you're not doing just arms on its own biceps you're doing it with something yeah. else. i, I was gonna say i would i would only do supersets with like something like arms mm. and maybe only for bikini not if I was coaching a male athlete, I wouldn't superset them because I know how important they are. And I know that you need to, you know, put the intent there. But for a bikini, when they don't really need arms as a focus, that's something you can kind of superset. Yeah. Right. So I, I would do push-pull together as well and stuff like that for, for most of my guys. But again, yeah. it's, 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 knowing, it's knowing who you work with, though, isn't it? Knowing that sort of stuff. But mm. I think our people would tend to definitely move towards supersets. Because, again, from a time point, most of them are like, oh, my God, get me out of this place 40 minutes. <laughs> Whereas most bodybuilders, <laughs> whereas most bodybuilders would rather stay for two hours than than yeah. one. So it's kind of yeah. Like, yeah. so on yeah. that. Do you do you have a best gym that you've ever experienced in your life? If there was a gym that you were picking for this dream gym day, and you were like, "All right, I'm still gonna wake up at home, have my brunch with my friends, or whatever, blah blah blah," but that's the gym I get to go to today. Ooh, so it's hard because gyms to me are more than just equipment it's also like the environment and the atmosphere and the community there Hundred um, yeah. so there are some gyms that on paper look amazing because they have the equipment that I need but I just didn't get the vibe that I wanted to and it, I didn't feel that community um so the one that I just moved to which is elite or elite uh I think they call it EP jungle now in Stockport um is incredible because they have lots of great equipment but the management is lovely, the owner is lovely and the community is really nice. And it's like quite an inclusive feel. Um, whereas I've trained in gyms before that are quite exclusive and they're quite um, el- elitist almost in who they let in. Um, <clears throat> so I like having that inclusive approach. And also there's another gym called Train With Intent, which is in Stafford, um, which literally started up as a unit during lockdown where they put some equipment in so people could train and they've developed it into this incredible facility, which has, again, great equipment, but it, like it is 
a family because it's it's such a small amount of members there and everyone knows everyone. So that's what I really like, like going in and saying hi to people and people remembering you and building those relationships. I think that's really important as someone like me who works from home. It is nice to go to an environment like that where people know who you are, ask how you are. You have that community. Like when I was prepping, people were asking about it and getting involved and interested and stuff like that, which is quite nice. Um, say the standouts, um, I think for me. In Ireland, there is literally nothing. And that's why you will see most Irish bodybuilders will move away from Ireland because there's very, very few gyms there that are worthwhile, which is a pity. Um, but up north, there seems to be a lot. Like Midlands, Midlands to up north, I think, has the mm-hmm. best. In London, obviously, it's hard because... Um, it's so expensive to have anything worthwhile size wise. Uh, so I think they do struggle to have like proper bodybuilding gyms there. Um, I don't think I've ever been to any down south, maybe in Brighton. But yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> Amazing. I've never visited either of those, so I'm sure I won't. Should if you're if you're in <laughs> Manchester, I'll show you around Elite. I'm in Manchester next week, unfortunately. No, so, I'm next to the airport though. My protein airport. slacking. And I, I think some, I think I, I can't remember what uh, place I'm going to. Next to the airport, I think I'm saying yeah, I'm it's actually like ten minutes away from me now because I was in the city centre and it was a bit further out. But and normally they put me up in the city centre and then cart me across. But I'm not pulling their finger out this week. No, unfortunately, oh. I don't even know what I'm doing. No, that'll be interesting next week. <laughs> um, nice. Sorry. So drink. I feel like this this has got to be big in bodybuilding world as well. So obviously we had a pre-workout, I'm assuming. Was that consumed via beverage? I dry scoop it usually because I prefer the taste of it that way. Apparently, what? You, they, you, they have, you literally have to just you eat the powder. Yeah, I take a scoop and then I, I chase it. <laughs> what? Is that a thing? <laughs> Dan's looking at me no. like you crazy. <laughs> Just mix it in a bit of water and drink it. Come on. It's not safe. You've, you've already you mixed it there you instead of rationale outside. as a poor starving little bikini girl. Um <laughs> it's kind of like you're tasting like sherbet. So you feel like you're having sweets, but you're have not. Sherbet. Just have sherbet. You feel like you're cheating the system a bit. Surely there's an element of this as a scientist that there must be a reason behind having a certain amount of water in some of those concoctions due to the the ice, it, whether it's isotonic or not or whatever. Well, so, I did. Yeah, I did say that there are certain active ingredients that I presume are not going to be fully activated <laughs> by not mixing in powder. But there's some at the odd time I do, but I don't like drinking like because a lot of pre-workers just don't taste very nice. Like it's very hard to find yeah, one, true. especially ones that are well panelled that are going to taste nice because the ingredients that are good are the ones that make them taste bad. <laughs> so um, yeah, I just, I dry scoop it or maybe a tiny bit of water, um, but I wouldn't have it as like a long drink to sip on on my way to the gym. Fair enough. All right, during the workout, what are you having? So I usually have either EAAs um which are again are mainly for the taste because I think I consume well enough protein to not need an intro workout but it's mainly for the taste um and I usually put my creatine in there because I will forget it otherwise um and some taurine and then I also might have some hydromax from strong because it tastes really nice keeps you hydrated um but honestly I would be happy to have squash because I'm not like one of these people who's like super obsessed with like having supplements for everything um I just like something nice to drink because it means I will drink it because I I rarely drink plain unflavored water I need to have some sort of flavoring in it um so yeah have you two seen the there's like you can buy a bottle and then you put like a little this thing around I don't know the sucky cup bit and it doesn't flavor the water it it gives you the scent of Ooh. something flavored and then, but it's still water you're drinking, but because the scent is there, you think it's the flavor of that scent, the water. Right, that's so weird. It yeah, seems like client... that seems a bit unnecessary for the fact that yeah. you can't buy squash. Like, 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 like that would be useful if it was like illegal to add anything to water. But like, <laughs> the fact that we have things you can just pour in water. Like, um, yeah, Robinson's is I mean, yeah. I want one, so it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to get that just for... Like just... Those, have you ever seen those straws that have the flavour that you drink your milk for? Yeah, you yeah. exactly. Like the Nesquik straws. You know, yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> one of those. I'd do that in a gym. That'd be fine. Yeah, that'd be quite nice. So my, my coach, actually, I meant to have whey in my intro workout, but I just couldn't, like, stomach that during my workout. So that's why oh, I have the EA instead. Yeah, I totally oh, agree. But there's no point. Just fucking have it some other time. 
That's awful. Yeah. But you see, he has started, he has, he told me to have way, but then he started having clear way. But I have a hypothesis in my head that I think clear way and EAAs are the same thing. I think it's just like a marketing scheme. Um, So I just have the EAAs. Don't know. Mm. I'll ask my protein next week. Yeah, ask them if they just make it. <laughs> like, you yeah. just made this shit Are up. you lying? <laughs> I've got a peach one. I've got, yeah, a cupboard full of my protein crap. Yeah. But yeah, there's just like a peach one. And it actually tastes quite nice. I've heard so, that my protein here way is nice. I've never tried it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm quite surprised that people haven't. I mean, if the clear way, it could be this, but I'm quite surprised that companies haven't basically got the baseline amino acids and made like a whey protein out of the baseline. Do you know what I mean? Like broken it down into like you say, you know, we can get BCAs and EAAs and we can get all yeah. the extra amino acids, right? EAA. That someone hasn't made like a whey protein, but from the ground up, rather than going right, here's the whey protein, we've figured it out, is to break it down into amino acids and then build up the amino acids that would be required in whey protein. Then you can have whatever flavor you want to it, Mm -hmm. rather than making it the milky texture because it's still like whey. Do you know what I mean by that? Does that make sense? Like, I'm sure it'd be a really expensive way of doing it, but that's what feels like the clear way is. It feels like they've gone, oh, it's it's all the the right amino acids to play away, but it's not milky. I'm like, well, how is this possible then? How have you made that? Like, because it should be milky. It is good because it's, yeah, it's not milky. I I still, it's still for me, it still has that, that I, I, I'm really like, I don't know if I just don't care enough anymore, but just supplements to me now, I'm just like, just don't take any of them. Like even the clear way to me tastes, there's something in it that tastes a bit like, I don't know. I can't, I just don't, I just don't like it at all. At all. But then I yeah. you know, probably should. I don't have protein in, but I can't drink protein <laughs> shakes anymore. I just can't even no. weigh ones. I, just I can't, can't drink go. protein. No, I have. I put it in like my oats or my cream of rice or have it in yogurt or something. But I'd never drink a shake ever. Yeah, mine, mine will go straight in a smoothie, and that's it. It's just, yeah, it's it's not done anymore, is it? No. I don't see anybody in the gym actually. No, you like know, doing... people used to like rush and like shake it up and drink it so that they didn't miss their anabolic window. Oh, I remember I used to be like first like maxi muscle i was like that tasted like shit and i was like doesn't matter. It's muscle nah. i don't care do you know what i mean and now i'm like oh, can pay me to drink it no. <laughs> but yeah i couldn't imagine drinking whey during a session that would not be on my dream gym day no, no, I haven't done it. No chance. <laughs> yeah. all right straight out of the gym are you showering at the gym has it got decent facilities for showering are you just like or have these gyms kind of like i think or are you going home and then heading out to your brunch so um I currently cycle to my gym because I don't have a car uh so it probably wouldn't make sense to shower before I cycle but Holly Holly it's your dream day you can you can drive if you want oh well, you can I get a limousine color. if you want you yeah, get a limousine yeah. I get a Hummer like... I get a stretch Hummer yeah. <laughs> mansion uh and <laughs> I will use my amazing shower at home that is obviously state of the art because it's my dream day <laughs> um, <laughs> but no I prefer showering at home I don't like the faff of being in a changing room shower no it's not my thing I think this is going to be a common theme on female guests um, I don't think anyone's going to prefer to shower in like a communal area so me and Dan went we, we both went for a shower in the gym <laughs> yeah so so like so this is the thing so Holly you can tell that you go die. You can tell that you train at very hardcore bodybuilding gyms. Right? Yeah, I don't train at like a David Lloyd with a nice... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you go to like a third space or you go to the golf club that I go to up here, right? I would yeah. rather shower there than I Yeah, do. correct. Like, I'm like, I would they're rather better, shower. Their showers are like, way better than mine. Individual right. cubicles, you've got a sauna, you've got a steam room, individual cubicles. Everything you need is in there. You can get changed in there, dried in there. You don't have to... No one sees anything. Do you know what I mean? You come out, you can be fully dressed. It's like nice, nice atmosphere, nice surrounding. You can, again, it's your dream day. There's no one else in there. You can do what you want, right? Okay. <laughs> but you can tell that you go to these bodybuilding gyms where literally it is a curtain and yes. one of those like press taps that you press the button and you wait yes. for the water to come out. Oh, <laughs> like it used to be when we were at football clubs, like you go play yeah, in, yeah. in your football team yeah. and like, it's the same thing. Whereas we're talking like high end, like spa type. I think you know, like, it's like a rainfall shower. You know, you can you can. I think the, you know. the the most like extra thing that is in one of the one of the gyms I go to is uh, so you know there's that middle ground of where you come out the shower and the like the. The room's quite hot but you're still a little bit sweaty and mm-hmm. it's just like you're kind of like cooling down from the shower if you, you probably nullify it by having a little cold blast of the shower but you've had a, like, a hot shower there's uh, a like a a wind tunnel coming oh, down from wow. the ceiling that you push and then it whirls like a wind tunnel at you that dries oh. you yeah that's that's extra it's awesome 
because uh, like in two minutes you're kind of just like perfectly dry and a good temperature and not sweaty at all and all good and then you can go put your clothes on lovely well so our tap good. doesn't even have hot, hot water in <laughs> the gym, so. yeah, so, yeah. See, i think this is the problem yeah, here, yeah. i yeah. think we need we need some sort of exposure into yeah some of the we see it's the... just like as i said there's just no vibes in a leisure center style gym like i know it's like elite level of <laughs> pleasant trees and you know it's all very nice and fancy but to me that's not what the atmosphere is that I go for like I want the spin no, yeah. I want the old school bodybuilders I want that yeah. community feel because that's where the family is like I've been to third space because like, we used to do the seminars with Michael yeah you went to that and one that I just shit. wasn't I wasn't feeling it the one in Canary Wharf there's no vibe it's just like, the, the Canary Wharf one their change rooms are the worst oh, are they? yeah, I haven't they're seen. awful uh, they're not good. They got a carpet that's about that's older than me. I'm just like, oh. it's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, not good. Not good. All right. Um, I feel like we want to know about this brunch. I feel like and well, I don't know actually, because considering what you've just had pre um on some sort <laughs> of protein sludge thing. Um, so yeah, what is brunch for me, Holly? There's got to be some calories in here at least. Oh, yeah, it depends because there, there's so many options. I haven't, I haven't had brunch in a long time, um, but I would go for something like a shakshuka. I don't know if you've had shakshuka mm-hmm. before. Very delicious. Um, see, my issue is whenever I go for brunch, the savory and the sweet all look amazing. So I'm like, I'll get the savory and then I'll have the sweet for dessert. But by the time I've had the savory, I'm like quite satiated and I feel like I won't enjoy the dessert very much because I'm not hungry enough for it so I don't have it so I always miss out on the pancakes or like the Biscoff French toast or you know whatever lovely thing they have to offer there um which looks amazing so ideally I would like to have room for both if I could or have like two stomachs um but I usually go for the eggs in so in some form or the huevos rancheros or um you can't go wrong with smashed avocado um or some smoked salmon i just love all of it like sourdough toast <laughs> it's all are you not a big are you not a big meat eater oh yeah i love meat okay and it's just because everything's been egg based yeah. well, yeah, you, right. you don't really have a like chicken for brunch do you oh no, but you could have sausages like... you could have bacon you could have yeah I, I, do, I, I like bacon but i think sausages are very hit and miss where, depending on where you go because I don't like when they're like too spicy or they have too much like rosemary or like weird too herb. herby yeah yeah, yeah. too herby um I do love black pudding like I love it um in Ireland we actually have black pudding sausages which are my favorite sausages they sound um, incredible they're very very nice um but yeah I do like meat sometimes you can get a good like brunch burger or something like that that would be nice um but yeah no I do eat a lot of meat <laughs> I've sold myself short on that one because I love having like proper like gourmet burgers with like the loaded fries and everything like that together I would never like get a burger from like a McDonald's or something I also I don't do chain restaurants ever um so I won't go to a chain restaurant it has to be like an independent and I will research it weeks in advance (laughs) 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 I, I totally agree like yeah I 100% rather go to like we when we were in Madrid we were literally just doing speciality coffee like making sure it's only one it was just like we're gonna go find all these little coffee places all these little brunch places uh which was decent you know? but yeah definitely better than yeah if yeah, you like, like yeah even like post show, post show when people are dying to eat and they would go to a Five Guys or something. Like I'd rather not eat after my show than eat a Five Guys. I just don't see the point. Well, because, well, like, Five Guys is still good. That's that's. Well, I just don't. You've had it like a million times. It's always the same. <laughs> else, Too I like good, variety. Though. Yeah, but sometimes you're just longing for that cuddle that you know. Cuddle, the like, Five Guys right, cuddle. You gotta be like, yeah, I know what I'm getting, and it's still fast food. But yeah, you'd still rather go to. I'd rather go to Burger and Beyond. But there's it, some the thing is, Five Guys is Five Guys is still loads better than like the. I know what you mean about the chains and stuff. Like, I'm not someone who's yeah. like, oh my god, I'd love to go to KFC, but I might have some some like fried chicken. Whereas the Five Guys for me isn't in the same category. It's not a yeah, McDonald's or Burger not, King. It's not on the same level as like Burger King, McDonald's. But I just yeah. like when I go somewhere, I like to go somewhere new all the time. So I just feel, I, why would I try the same thing when I've already tasted it before? Mm. um so even in london or in manchester there's just so much on my list that i haven't ticked off that i feel bad for going back to the same place so i feel like it's a wasted opportunity yeah. to try something else that's interesting 
Mm-hmm. Is there a favourite brunch spot then? But you haven't been for a while, so. Yeah. Um, there's a one in Manchester called Fress. That's very nice. Um, I had what did I have there? Oh, that's another really good brunch option. Uh, chicken and waffles and maple syrup. That's, that's a very a good, good brunch. Shot. option. That is yeah. it is. Now we're good. talking. Yeah, now we're talking. Yeah. I had a good one in Shoreditch actually in a place called Absurd Bird. Um, yeah, they been there, the eating that. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, that's good. That's good crack. That that's that's nice. I can do, I can be down with absurd bird for the yeah. uh, chicken and waffles. I love fried. I love like good fried chicken is delicious. It's kind of they, they've. There's quite a few restaurants have taken it away now though. This is really annoying. I don't know whether it's been as well received um because obviously an American thing. But mm-hmm. yeah, more people because quite a lot of people kind of like what? Why would you have that? Why are you having that for breakfast? Chicken You're like. Just haven't tried it. Just yeah, and in it. the breakfast club, they have chicken and waffles as well, but they have like a peanut butter sauce with it. Yeah. Very nice too. That is good. All right. Let's start to bring this to a close. What else? Obviously, we've we've woken up. You've had some sludge. You're working out using probably mainly a Cybex Bravo yeah. um, and not really going anywhere else. Um, <laughs> we've gone chicken and waffles or some sort of egg variety. What else is in your dream day? like gym day what after that do you do or would you do if you had the option to that's so hard a gym related thing that doesn't have to be gym related you've been to the gym it's fine okay. what else are you doing for the rest of the day i mean amelia just went and i don't know what she'd do had a walk i don't know go to the beach and just go to the beach um <laughs> i love i'm just gonna sound really sad but i love seminars and gatherings and stuff so it's going to be like in any way fitness related it would be some sort of seminar where I, like I'm immersed in like-minded people and we learn something together because I think that's a really nice way to bond with people or an expo um I always say that I have an alter ego when I call her expo holly because when I'm at an expo I feel like my my other personality comes out and I just come to life because I just I love being there meeting new people you know seeing old people networking developing friendships you know and so many opportunities have happened for me from going to seminars and going to expos. That's really like, I feel propelled me forward in my career in the fitness industry. Um, so I love that. Like whether it's like, I went to Fit Expo last, it was Fit Expo 2021, where I subconsciously convinced the Physique Collective to take me on as a as part of the team. Um, and obviously I've met um, like a lot of my sponsors through that and lots of people. I did my first public speaking event last year at an expo. That was really fun. Obviously nice. met really cool people through the seminars I've done. Um, so yeah, I love doing them. Any any of them I would go to. Sounds like Dan's worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Other people, no. Uh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> See, I like a bit of a mix because I do live alone. I love being around people, but I'm happy to then go back to being alone. So I like the combination. I'm not just like extroverted all the time and need to be surrounded by people all the time. I like being surrounded by people, but then I like my alone time to kind of balance it off as well get that yeah i i can yeah give or take an expo i don't know have to be the right frame of mood as long as it's not like fucking fit expo is like three days that one in, yeah, I was there in liverpool days oh yeah i i know they they asked us to stay till the sunday where i was like i'm going home on saturday night this is i'm not <laughs> absolutely not we we're there friday saturday i was like yeah. this is long no very long what's the one that's coming up there's one in london that's like in march I can't remember what what's the it was a, they did it last year. I can't remember what it is now. I don't I don't really follow because there's there's like fitness ones that I don't really get involved in anymore. You know, like the IFS style ones. I wouldn't really know anyone yeah. there. Um, but it's more the ones that have like actual bodybuilding related stuff in it that I would go to. Yeah, I'm not at those ones. Yeah, <laughs> they, they're not asking me to speak, unfortunately. <laughs> like. Uh, what plyometric shot? None. Yeah. Do None. <laughs> we just want to get jacked. <laughs> Beautiful. Anything else we need to ask, Holly, Daniel? I don't think so. No. Um, but you know, no, fun. not about your perfect gym day. I think that's all there. It's all. It's all in it. I think we're all good. I think that was that was good. In terms of actually having someone on the uh, exercises, it was just it's a novelty for us. So which yeah. is good. Oh. <laughs> All right. For anybody that wants to go find Holly, where are they going to go find you, Holly? Uh, probably on Instagram. My username is at Holly underscore Physique Collective. Uh, if you want to check out my coaching or my education stuff. Um, I also have a food page if you didn't understand that I quite like food. So it's at Hungry Holly Diaries. 
you can follow my food endeavors and, and journey through through that page amazing i didn't know you had a food page go check it out you'll love it we can go we'll go check that out yeah. that's, that's something i can relate to all your bodybuilding stuff i'm like you'll much prefer of... it to my normal page it's probably far more interesting to be fair correct. that is 100 percent correct yeah i follow a few of you physique collective people and like obviously the old muscle mentors and all that kind of stuff i get on with you all like to be fair i'm just i just sit at the other end of the biomechanical spectrum I think. i'm actually I'm like... quite proud that you have kept following me through all this <laughs> like, no I mean, jesus being loyal. another person with a fucking cuff i'm like oh, no it's fine no it's cool it's it's just about it's about respect and understanding isn't it it's just like yeah i understand why you're doing it it's yeah. fine absolutely i'm not that's, the, it, that's the that's the one thing the fitness industry lacks really isn't it is it's an understanding i think we've all probably been there in it you know when we're younger yeah. a bit more inexperienced and, and maybe a bit more vocal and stuff and i think as you grow up you realize oh no i get i get what you're doing that's fine yeah, you just yeah. Go, yeah. imagine Everyone's if we're way. all the same that'd be fucking boring yeah, it's for all of our niches and all of our strengths so that's it absolutely 100%. all right holly thank you so much for coming on absolute pleasure um hopefully you've you yeah are you going to be in the line for winning, like, best, I guess best guest now? Fuck me. That'd be fun. Best, gy- best gym day or best guest? Best well, gym I've day guest. To choose from, so I'm hoping my well, answer. we've hopefully got a, a raft of people throughout the year. That has been an endeavor that we're going to be doing um, and getting more people that haven't, like, don't do the rounds so much on podcasts, apart from Amelia, apparently, because she had about <laughs> seven in one yeah. day. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a fitter and uh, a tight schedule. But, yeah um oh actually that'd be a good we should ask this to everybody who comes on dan who should we try and get on as yeah. a, for to hear the dream gym day oh my god that's gonna be so hard to think of on the spot sorry i wasn't in yeah for, for once so guys, i been, actually sent if, we sent I, questions for the show so yeah, yeah if i uh <laughs> if i recommend any other bodybuilder then they're going to be very similar to me so i'd have to have a think about someone who's not a bodybuilder i suppose for a bit of diversity and variety who who yeah i don't know in terms of instagram follows who well who do you like watching is there anybody you think will have an interesting gym day oh god i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> none as good as mine i just think that all of all of us bodybuilders are so like regimented and routined that if i even if i got like my coach on who i think is incredible he'd be like yeah just sit at home go to the gym in my back garden eat my meals and that's it and that's my perfect day and he'd be like okay <laughs> jesus we're gonna get somebody somebody outlandish who we'll just get somebody who doesn't train we're like, yeah, no, I'm, going to the gym. The gym. I'm sure they're far more interesting to be honest <laughs> <laughs> We've, we've unfortunately got our niche yeah we yeah. decided to do a, a fitness podcast but yeah we'll have to branch out of that oh do you know awesome. you should get on you should get on the liver king fuck me yeah, yeah that'll be easy okay. <laughs> <laughs> have you got a spare 50 grand and yeah. can come on it's like jesus christ could you imagine that'd be awesome <laughs> oh yeah that'd be interesting then i just Doom day. <laughs> you just pick up some big kettlebells and put some chains around him and just go and walk this is walk around thing. big logs yeah. <laughs> we already know right. what he'd eat we already know what he'd eat before during yeah, after it's, so it's pointless yeah. it's actually fine you already right. know <laughs> awesome All right thanks for coming on Holly and we will hopefully have a few more guests sign up because that's Dan's job next time um, most likely in February no he's just shaking his head it's absolutely it's fine it? um, yeah <laughs> Obviously, uh, a bunch of this stuff will come out on Instagram. Go watch it on YouTube if you want to. Go follow Holly's Instagram stuff. Probably more the food one. Most of our listeners will want to go on to more than anything else. But thanks for coming on, Holly. And we will catch everybody next week. Okay.